Oxygen pack, check. Tether cord, check. Cameras, check. Thermal gloves, check. Astronaut Ed White was ready. Boosting himself out of the Gemini 4 hatch, White began America's first spacewalk. It was 1965. White beamed as he floated at the end of his 25-foot tether, shooting photographs. Too soon, the spectacular walk ended. White made his way slowly back to the spacecraft, but before he handed his gear to his fellow astronaut, he dropped a spare glove. That glove joined an assortment of odds and ends we call space trash. Over the years, the trash circling around our globe has grown. Space Shuttle Atlantis astronauts lost a couple of bolts in space. Discovery astronauts lost a spatula while repairing their shuttle with special putty. A camera, bits of broken equipment, and even garbage bags tossed out by the MERS space station have added to the debris in space. At least 10,000 pieces of junk measuring four inches or larger are orbiting our planet. The United States Space Program tracks this trash because even though the debris is way up in space, it could cause us big problems here on Earth if it hits something. It started with the satellites. For 50 years now, people have been sending objects into space. Some of those things have been brought safely down to Earth, but others have been left in space to drift. It all began in 1957 when the Soviet Union launched Sputnik 1, the world's first artificial satellite. A satellite is anything that revolves around a planet and is held in orbit by the gravitational pull of the planet. Our moon, for instance, is a natural satellite. Artificial satellites are objects that people make and send into space. To launch satellites out of Earth's atmosphere and into space, Rockets must travel at least 18,000 miles per hour and fly more than 120 miles into the sky. Such rockets have several powerful engines, a large supply of, supply of fuel, and a payload. The payload is the object being sent into the sky, like a satellite. When the rocket fires its engines one after another, the used up parts of the rocket fall away and beca become part of space trash. Sputnik 1 circled Earth every 96 minutes. The United States launched its first satellite, Explorer 1, the next year. Scientists used Explorer 1 to measure how much radiation Earth had in its atmosphere. Today, about 850 satellites orbit our planet. We use satellites every day. When you send a text message or use your cell phone to make a call, a satellite in space sends and receives your messages. Satellites also bring television programs from all over the world to people's homes. They send meteorologists, scientists who study the weather, pictures of cloud formations from high above so that the meteorologist on the morning news can tell us whether to bundle up for snow or to grab an umbrella for rain. Some car passengers use satellites about 12,000 miles above us to track where they are on a digital map located on the car dashboard. When satellites are no longer useful, they become part of the ring of space trash around the Earth. They circle the globe with the pieces of the rocket that first brought them up into space. Around our planet lies a 60-mile thick blanket of air called our atmosphere. The farther from Earth, the thinner the air becomes. Gravity also becomes weaker. Satellites and space trash orbit outside Earth's atmosphere and remain in orbit because of their speed or velocity. Earth's gravity holds such objects just enough to keep them from flying off into outer space. After many, many orbits, a satellite begins to lose velocity. Gravity wins the battle and pulls the object downward. It then drops to Earth at an extremely fast speed. This speed creates intense heat that makes the object burn. Spacecraft also heat up when they enter the atmosphere on a trip back to Earth. Russian space experts think Sputnik 1 and the Sputnik satellites that followed burned up this way. 
But the people of Manitowoc, Wisconsin, see things differently. They believe that Sputnik 4 landed in their town in 1962, right in the middle of 8th Street. A big chunk of metal lay embedded into the middle of the street, while two police officers puzzled over it. Finally, the townspeople sent the 20-pound lump of metal to Washington, D.C. From there, it was returned to the Soviet Union. Today, a brass ring marks the spot on the street in Manitowoc where the chunk landed. The incident in Wisconsin wasn't the only time space trash has fallen into an area where people live. In 1997, a 500-pound rocket fuel tank landed in a field close to a Texas farmhouse. In 2000, people in South Africa found a large, battered metal tank in a dusty field. Though it looked like a giant ostrich egg, it was a piece of space trash that had fallen to Earth. Why worry? While most objects that re-enter the Earth's atmosphere burn up, scientists agree that some space trash can survive the fall to Earth. Most of this junk they expect to fall into areas with few or no people, such as the world's vast ocean, desert, or tundra areas. Even though it's extremely unlikely that falling space trash will harm anyone, there is a good reason to worry about space trash. This junk can hit other spacecraft. An object must travel 17,000 miles per hour to stay in orbit. An object the size of a tennis ball traveling at that speed could seriously damage weather satellites, space telescopes, and other instruments used for gathering information. Even things as small as chips of paint could damage other objects at such high speeds. A chip of paint made a nick in a window of the Space Shuttle Challenger. Scientists believe the dangers of this whirling junk belt around our planet will continue to grow as objects continue colliding and creating more debris. Cleanup time. More than 400 people have traveled in space. Right now, astronauts live on the International Space Station. Scientists are working hard to find ways to keep these astronauts safe from speeding space trash. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, even has a special office to deal with the problem. Scientists have considered ways to get rid of used rockets and payloads in space. One way would be to just shoot used satellites far into outer space. Another way would be to create a special spaceship that would travel around snatching and destroying these objects. Still another way would be to zap the trash with powerful lasers. Just as with garbage on Earth, space junk needs to be managed. And in space, as on Earth, it may be that prevention is the best cure.